Can I also ask the lights to be turned off, please? And Reza is going to take us on a journey. He's going to take us on a journey through the places that he's been and tell us how climate change has impacted the people that he's seen over the course of his travels. Thank you, Barish, for such a scientific and also very nicely explain the whole things happening to us and bring us to think about it, uh, who we are and uh, how we can make the change, actually. I have brought mainly just some of the photographs, talking about photography and how the photography could be, a especially in our century, could be a vector of the change. And uh, this is what really I do, the photography for humanity. And uh, this is exactly when it started, when I was 13 years old in Tabriz in Iran. And I wanted to change the world. And I still want to change the world. I'm trying to find a different way. And the photography for me is one of the major uh, way of the connecting people and explaining to things. Obviously, uh, it's just an element. But from this moment, which I learned photography, till now, I have been trying to bring uh, the photography as a main vector of the information. Uh, this is one of my photographs I did in a story for National Geographic on Turkey. This was in Dogu Bayazid. Then I keep traveling. So the in this past 40 years of traveling in more than 100 countries, uh, obviously on the field you have to go through different type of the works. This was in uh, one Afghanistan the, during the war with the Taliban and Al Qaeda, uh, doing the, the National Geographic documentary film, which is called Into the Forbidden Zone. Um, so, traveling and just seeing the poverty also that caused by different vectors, uh, I also came to encounter with the people that were suffering from the war and conflict. And then I realized that uh, the people which are suffering from the war and conflict are mainly the children and women. These are the two main of the population that they suffer from wars. And I was more concentrating on the wars. Then I come little by little to see the result of the wars also, the, the which is refugees. These are some Afghan refugees which I photographed during the the time which I was traveling is myself on the food, actually. It was the time that uh, I have gone in a couple of years, almost um, 3,000 miles, maybe 5,000 kilometers on the mountain, traveling and meeting those people that in the beginnings you realize that these are all refugees from the war zone and from the conflict zone. And then I mean you start trying to looking for r reasons of the wars and uh, what the war does to the people. Like this little girl in Afghanistan when the whole village was bombed. And for me, this was the most important story than the whole village what was bombed and burning because in one phase, you could see the whole story of the what the war is doing to this one person, which means to all humanity. And that's how, if you look to her, you don't know even if she's five years old or 50 years old. That's how you lose your innocence. You lose your childhood. But then I realized that the war is not only inflicting the people, but also inflicting the environment, inflicting the animals. These are some of the best horses in the world, actually, Arab pure blood horses in Beirut after the bombardment by Israeli's airplane in the siege of Beirut. Or recently in Iraq, the in the front line, I was a lot in the front line uh, fighting the ISIS, and then the destruction that happened and is still happening in the Middle East 
It's a t total disaster. And again, these are all, I'm looking to the wars and the mainly the, uh, the poverty. Obviously, the, the famine is another thing that's happening in our society, in our time. And I had to know about this to understand it. But for this specific scene, I was quite confused uh, going from Paris, my office, uh, taking an airplane, going to Africa, and photographing someone dying from hunger. Uh, it was really tough for me. And the, the fact which I'm always trying to, photo when I'm photographing people or stories, uh, to understand uh, the story, to, to feel what's happening. For this story, for example, uh, to get ready to be there, for 72 hours I didn't eat anything. I closed the door in my apartment in Paris, and no food, and then for 72 hours I didn't eat, so at least I knew when I was meeting uh, him or her what is meaning to be in hunger. Ob obviously not like him or her, but at least to understand what is going on and what is happening. I'm showing it to explain to you what we call photography, is the difference that usually people think about the what is the photography that taking us a uh, mobile phone or camera and just take pictures and go back. It's a the total process of the understanding the, the whole story. And this was the time that finally I came out to understand that, well, most of the wars which I was covering, and I were the famine, the hunger, and refugees, it's all related to climate it's change. And where this climate change comes? With the oil. So suddenly I realized that the oil industry is the one that creates the wars, but also is the oil that creates climate change. And this was while I was doing the story about oil. So I went a lot in a different countries in the world to photograph what the oil does to us. That the, the, uh, you saw Boris was showing about the Boris was showing about the, how the temperature changed, but also the whole wars. Almost eighty percent of the wars that we are living now today, and or in the past forty years, which I have photographed, or in the past hundred years in the world, eighty percent of the wars and conflict, it was because of the oil. This is this is the example. For me, was I was photographing the oil on the sea, and suddenly, you know, with the waves, this oil came out like this monster faces. This is the probably was the message was sent to me saying that this is this is what's going to happen to the humanity if we continue not taking care of the planet and what's going on, or <coughs> another oil stories, and this is the, uh, when they extract the oils in some countries, when the oil is not pure and it's mixed with the sulfate, so they have to uh, separate the sulfate, which is just, you see this red liquid. And they, I'm sure that you have heard about the oil and blood, which is co all come together. This is the real, like, color of the blood, which is coming from extracting the oils. Then when they make it dry, it became this yellow, unbelievable hazardous, which is destroying the whole environment. And this is another way of looking to the, or here, uh, burning the, what is the remaining of the oil when they're extracting the oil. So more I start working on the oil and gas, more like this is in Russia when the gas is coming uh, uh, from the ground uh, because they use the, uh, in part of the north of the Caspian Sea, the Gazprom, they are using underground the huge holes that was created by the early nuclear 
ex um, uh, tests that they were doing on the ground, the Russian. And so those te tests has created huge reservoirs on the ground that now they use to keep the gas on it. But the gas is start leaking out. So imagine this gas which is mixed with the radioactive. It's already there. It's already in the north of the Caspian Sea. And these are the people from the village that they were protecting themselves from it. Or you see the oil again, and then poverty. The incredible thing is that poverty and oil, it's in most of the countries that are the producers of the oil, most of them, which is in Africa or Asia, they are also, uh, or in the South America, the population living in, uh, in the poverty. And this is another, which I call the curse of the oil, of course, of the oil. Look what's happened to Iran. Iran, one of the richest country, and got all these oils. First of all, in eight years of war with Iraq, they destroyed exactly the same amount that they have earned over 100 years of the oil. In eight years of the war with Iraq, the Islamic Republic and Iran, they lost Everything that they have learned, earned from the oil industry over 100 years. This is the first curse. The second is that now you, you can see the, how the people living in a poverty in Iran while the price of the oil is up, while the billions of billion dollars, nobody knows where it's going and how it's going. In the meantime, the drought has brought all these problems in the whole region. As you mentioned, the Syria, it's perfectly in a good example of the war of the Syria, the reason. Last year, 2017, the reservoir of the waters in Iran dam was minus 40% of the 2016, which is meaning that it's drought happening also in Iran, like in Syria, like in many, Libya or happened, like a lot of other countries. So this is the result of the poverty also created that to see how the people living in which conditions here. Going around and looking of how the oil industry is destroying the, the humanity and the creating the poverty. But in the meantime, my goal is not just photographing only disasters. I came to photograph because I want to create empathy between people. I want to make the people to understand in each, other, each other. And as you know, there is no planet B. There's only one planet for us, which is this one, and we have to take care of it. So for me, creating the empathy, creating, showing the, the, the cultures, and creating this connection is the main part of my works as a photographer, which I'm doing, because if you are not attracted by the beauty, if you are not, if you don't love some things, you will not defend it. So in the meantime, which I was photographing the destructions of the, our planet, but also I was looking also for the beauty, oh, beauty of the humanity, beauty of the faces, beauty of the, uh, each creature, each person, uh, that you can find it all over the world. The Altai Mountain. So you have to love this, then you, have, you will protect it. If you don't love it, you will not protect it. If you don't love planet, so you will not go for the, uh, protecting it. And that's how my photography has brought, and all the works which I am doing, has brought me to do the both sides, to, to make the people love the humanity, love the beauty, love the culture. So, and that's how I was trying to spread my works. These are my works on National Geographic covers. And if you see, actually, there is no a single wildlife. There is no nature, I mean, no, not landscape. No gorilla, no snakes in it. 
this is the all works which I do. The, my works is concentrated on the human issues and human works, not only in National Geographic, but if you could see, it's also in many other publication and uh, newspapers or magazine, like a f couple of thousands of those publication and the covers that shows the wars and conflict, but or doing the books also. Books is another way for me to spread the whole issue which I'm going through, which I'm seeing it, because every single picture which I take, I am responsible to show it to the world, and I have to find a different way. So another way is through National Geographic Channel or other TVs in the world. I have done, the National Geographic has almost 10 documentaries which is on my works and my travels and doing all those things, my, I'm explaining what I have seen and, or, or I do exhibition also. Another way to connecting and talking to the people, this was about the refugees in the Seine River in Paris, which I do a lot of outdoor exhibition explaining the whole things uh, to the people, bringing, talking, or even this conference which I'm doing, because every single picture which I take, it's give me a responsibility to spread the story, because, and why I use photography, because this is the, the big transition that we are living now. You see, we are coming from 5,000 years ago that the image, hieroglyph, has become the common language. Uh, they didn't have iPhone to say, or the phone, to text those messages to us, but we find a way and we created our own new languages. So that's why the, the importance of the photography and image is for us. Okay, so that's what you became. This is not climate warming, it's climate cold. It's minus 40 degrees in Siberia for National Geographic. And then, then also fun that I want to show, this is the way which I work also, as I said, the, this this way of the photography, it is not just click, clack, merci, Kodak. It's not just taking your cameras out and taking pictures and going back. It's a, it's a way of the living story. It's a way of understanding the stories. And to do this, every time that I'm in a country, I'm really getting as close as possible to the people, the clothes, and everything's in it. And this is the my non-profit, which I train also people in the war zone, because I believe to the beauty, as I said, the, the whole thing I'm doing is for the beauty of the humanity, and the, the conflict, the, the wars, the drought, all of them, we could change it. Maybe the photography will not change the world, now I understand, but photography is changing the people's mind. And these are those people that their mind has changed and understand what's happening. They change. They will change the world. Uh, so yes, art. Art is a solution for many of the problems we had. If we add some little two word to find a solution, this is the main solution. And I really believe that everybody of us which had a heart, and you all have, we are able to became the Gandhis and Mandelas and Luther Kings of our times and changed the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Reza. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now that concludes our panel for today. We will continue with question and answer sessions. Um, the story that we've delivered today, the information that we gave, Burish kindly walked us through the causes, the results, and the impact with numbers, with science, of climate change. Reza has walked us through the humanitarian side of what this climate change has done to people. As a closing note, I would like to say that from what we've all seen today, there is something that each and every one of us can do to prevent climate change from digressing and getting worse. There's something in each of us, and as Reza says, heart is the solution for everything. We have to believe, we have to love, and we have to take action on it.